This is Electric Fields 3. Uh, if you haven't watched the other two videos, then check them out first. Um, so, so far we've talked about uh, force. We talked about electric force, force due to an electric charge, force on a charge due to an electric charge, and we gave that as kqq over r squared. We talked about force per unit charge, which is electric field strength. Um, which is kq over r squared. So all we talked about really is the force on something or the force on a unit charge, so field strength and the force. But what we're going to talk about in this video is energy. Imagine you had a, uh, a positive charge that is, for the sake of arguments, infinitely far away from another positive charge. Now, in order to bring that positive charge closer, remember that the electric field around this positive charge, hold on, the electric field around this positive charge is something like that, uh, and the field lines show us the direction of the force on a positive charge, so they're going to be pointing away. So in order to bring this other charge into this electric field, we need to put in some energy. It's going to repel. Those, those two charges are going to repel each other. There's going to be a repulsive force. So we need to put in some energy. We need to do work. Now, the amount of work done bringing a unit point positive charge from infinity to a point in electric field is called the potential of that point. So this, whoops, sorry. So this point here, here, has a potential, an electrical potential. And the electric potential is defined as the work done bringing a unit point positive charge from infinity to a point in an electric field. So <clears throat> the amount of work that you need to do to bring this, uh, let's say that's one coulomb of charge. So to bring this one positive coulomb of charge from infinity to this point, the amount of work that you have to do is called the potential. Now we give the potential a symbol V. And so the, the potential is the work done divided by the charge, the work done per unit charge. And so we can calculate the amount of work done that we would need. Now, this changes slightly if this is a negative charge, because if this is a negative charge, then all of these arrows are pointing inwards like this. And you wouldn't need to do any work to bring a positive charge closer to a negative charge because the work is done by the attraction between the charges. And so the potential of a point in a field around a negative charge is negative because you need to do a negative amount of work. It's going to release energy when, the, when this charge moves here. When this charge moves to that point in a negative, in a field around a negative charge, then it's going to be a negative amount of work done. It's going to be pulled in by the attraction between the charges. So the potential around a negative charge is has a negative value you need to do a negative amount of work now we don't often bring things from infinity to places it's a slightly unrealistic and theoretical thing to do um, we often bring things however we often move things around within fields um, say for example uh, moving from point a here to point b and uh, if we had a unit positive charge at point A, and we wanted to move it to point B, that's also going to take some work. That's going to take work because it's being repelled by this charge, so we're going to have to put in energy to move the point positive charge from A to B. Um, and if you think about it in terms of potential, then if you take infinity over here and we move the point, the unit point positive charge from infinity to point A, and from infinity to point B, it's going to take more energy, it's going to do, take more work to move the point positive, unit point positive charge from infinity to B, because B is closer to this positive charge, so it's being repelled more, the field strength is stronger at B. So, um, there is a difference between the potential at A and the potential at B. 
and the potential difference is the amount of work needed to move the point positive charge from A to B. So potential difference is defined as the work done moving a unit point positive charge from one point to another point in an electric field. Now this is useful um, for things like circuits, it's useful for things um, like experiments where we're accelerating electrons, which we'll talk about next. If we have an electron and we want to accelerate that electron, we want to move it, for example, around a circuit or um, to shoot it as a screen if we're doing any experiments involving electron collisions, then we can accelerate the electron. And because the potential is equal to the work done, oops, the work done divided by the charge, the work done per unit charge, then we can say that the work done on the electron is equal to the potential times the charge. So if we have if we have an electron that we want to accelerate, and if we accelerate that through a potential difference of one volt, V is one volt, then we the amount of work done accelerating one electron, so this is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, so we're accelerating an electron through one volt times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, that gives us 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And that value there is, the, is called an electron volt. And it's useful because it's an extremely small amount of energy, but it's a very clearly defined amount of energy. So when we're talking in tiny amounts of energy, we use the unit electron volts instead of joules. And the conversion rate is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules is one electron volt.